friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Welcome to Code Wars Code Katas episode 34. Well, we're gonna break things down one step at a time. We're gonna solve these katas, you and I. We're gonna break things down one step at a time. We're gonna solve these katas, you and I. Welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and uh, if you're new to the show, you can visit github.com slash coding garden slash code dash katas. You can see all of the katas that I've solved in past episodes. All of the katas that I solved today will be pushed up here as well. Um, if you've never heard of Code Wars, it's a website where you can choose algorithmic problems, puzzle problems, uh, different things like that that are of varying skill levels and you can practice your coding skills. And they have lots of different programming languages. Usually I use JavaScript. Let's say hello to everyone. Hello, Christopher, welcome to the stream. Hello, get some. Hello, Mahidra, hola, micro, welcome. Hello, Zuhaib, hello, David, hello, Depeche. Hello, Matia, hello, Coding Pasta, hello, Phil Carbo. Mahidra says, bring it on. Well, I'll try to. <laughs> uh, hello, JB. And uh, they like the, the logo thing, I appreciate that. Theme Tractor says, CJ, hello, you are the best. Thank you, Theme Tractor. Hello, Raphael. Hello, Tannis. Hello, Sai. Uh, Ricky is saying, first time on Twitch. It's super fast. Yeah, and if you compare it to YouTube, the delay is way, way less. So maybe you should go watch on Twitch. I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> hello, Zachary. Uh, hello, N21 from Poland. Very good. Welcome. Uh, hello, Krisu from Germany. Hola, Abdelhamid. Good morning, the Michael Jolly. How's it going? Uh, Biswajit. Hello. Welcome. Hello, Rahit. Hello, YVZ. Okay, so I don't have any katas picked out. Um, if you go to my GitHub repo, um, I do have an issue tracker where you can suggest a kata for me to solve. Um, the ones that are open right now are very hard, and it's early in the morning, so <laughs> I'm not going to do these hard ones. I might do them this evening. Um, so if you have any, have any suggestions, throw them in the chat. Uh, for now, we're just going to search the website. So on the Code Wars website, these are organized in order from uh, least difficult to most difficult. So 8Q is the easiest, 1Q is the hardest. We're going to start with 8Q. And let's see. I'll say all katas that I have not trained on. Um, sort by most completed. So um, all of the problems on Code Wars are user submitted. So a lot of times if you choose one that's not very popular, it might be very hard to decipher what that thing is asking for. Um, so let's choose one. And there's lots of chats coming in. Uh, Harsh says, congrats on the new subs. The community is growing. Yes, it is. Um, so I was mentioned in a uh, Traversy Media video, which is pretty insane. I gained like 5,000 YouTube subscribers in like two days. Um, but we're still here. It's the same show it's always been. <laughs> Nothing much has changed. Hello, Infi. Good morning, Mayur. Um, oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, so I actually enabled the chat translator. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, uh, it's an overlay. Um, so that's great. MicroSD is using it, so that's good. Hello, Spacey. Hello, Amir from Pakistan. <laughs> Hello, Katoli. Uh, and thanks for the follow, uh, Torben Hack. Cool. Um... Two pixels here in the UK. Welcome, web. Welcome. Okay. So this will probably be easy. Convert a string to a number. Let's see what this is about. Um, yeah, we need a function that can transform a string into a number. What ways of achieving this do you know? That would be fun because we can explore the different ways in JavaScript to do that. So we'll keep that one open. Jenny's secret message. Uh, Jenny has written a function that returns a greeting for a user. However, she's in love with Johnny and would like to greet him slightly different. Uh, she added a special case for her function. Weird. Okay. This is my break timer. If you have the YouTube, um, what do you call it? Captions on? It usually says pig timer. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but let's, let's just see really quick what this thing is even asking for. So uh, we have a function called greet, takes in name. We need to return hello name. If the name equal, wait, what? It's already solved. That, that one's weird. We're going to close that one. That, that one's weird. Uh, keep hydrated. Uh, Nathan loves cycling. Because Nathan knows it is important to stay hydrated, he drinks 0.5 liters of water per hour of cycling. 
Uh, you get given the time and hours, and you need to return the number of liters Nathan will drink, rounded to the smallest value. Um, so time is three. I see. So they drink uh, 0.5 liters per hour. We're given the number of hours, and we have to compute it and round it. Also fairly easy, but probably a lot of ways to do it. A needle in a haystack. Uh, can you find the needle in the haystack? Write a function, find needle, that takes an array full of junk but containing one needle. Uh, after your function finds the needle, it should return a message that says, found the needle at position plus the index. That will be fun too because there's many ways we could solve it. All right, let's choose like one more and then we'll vote. We'll vote on which one I'll do. Count of positive sums and, and let's see. Given an array of integers, return an array where the first element is the count of positive numbers and the second element is the sum of the negative numbers. Ooh, that sounds fun too. Okay, we're going to vote. Um, which 8Q should I solve? Um, string to number. Keep hydrated. Um, uh, a needle in the haystack. Haystack. There you go. And count of positives sums of negatives. Count of positive sums of negatives. Count of positives sum of negatives. There we go. All right, so I'll send this poll out and you can begin voting now. Well, when I send it out. Right, now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> My, uh, um, my chat integration is totally broken. I could barely get this chat window to work this morning. Everything's going wrong. Ugh. Everything's going wrong. Yeah, even that. There's that. <laughs> Let me pop out the chat. Uh, oh, where is it? Where is it? There it is. There we go. We'll, we'll figure it out. We've got time. Um, here in Denver, Colorado, it is very snowy outside and the roads are not clear um yeah it's a thing and i'm gonna work from home today so there's that please vote now <clears throat> and we can watch the results as they build up Ooh, very good very good <laughs> all right let's catch up on the chat thanks for the follow of the michael jolly i very much appreciate it um hello hassan uh from morocco welcome and thanks for the follow harsh p uh, and thanks for the YouTube sub, Bogdan. Um, Spacey says, this series has inspired me to create my own code puzzle slash kata series. Should be great for practice. Thanks for all the inspiration. You're very welcome. Yeah, and, and it's always great to see um, other people solve katas. Um, and I mean, that's kind of why I do it because everybody solves problems in different ways. And when you're learning, it can be good to just see how do people do it so you can figure out figure out your own way, you know? So that's awesome, Spacey. Uh, my hair says LMAO. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, Carlos. Hello, ResMed. Uh, good morning, Brandon. Congrats on the 20K. Thank you so much. Yeah, so that was ridiculous. I think like two weeks ago we hit 15K and now all of a sudden we're at 20. What is happening? Uh, Hello, Amir. Welcome. Uh, Hello, Steven. Um, thanks for the follow, Cyber. Justice, it's live. It is live right now. <laughs> You're here. It's happening. Welcome. Um, you I don't I mean, if you sent that message, maybe you couldn't even see me, but if you try refreshing the page, maybe maybe that will show up. Uh, Ashwin says, hello, CJ. It would be nice to see you solve needle in a haystack. You, sh you could show many different search algorithms implemented in, in, in JavaScript. Yeah, that'd be fun. Let's look at the results so far. Looks like needle in a haystack is winning. That's probably the one we'll do. Uh, MP is saying, fun fact, by randomly moving the mouse while the reCAPTCHA on straw poll is loading, you have an almost 100% guaranteed passing rate because reCAPTCHA mostly looks for mouse moves. Yeah, I figured that out a long time ago. Like, when you click launch CAPTCHA, just like move your mouse in a circle, because it's trying to detect if you're a human, and usually robots don't move their mouse in a circle, so. <laughs> 
Um, hello, Danielle. Good morning. Welcome. And thanks for the follow, Yavuz. Welcome. Uh, Steven says, I've been following on Twitch since February. O OG Twitch follower. I was, I streamed like a few games a while back, but then just about a month ago, I actually started streaming on Twitch. So that's cool. Uh, Rick says, make more Svelte Feather apps. That would be fun. Um, so my, was it my last live stream? Two live streams ago, I was working on some Feathers tutorials and I, um, <laughs> um, yes, I built a front end with Svelte that talked to a Feathers back end. So that was fun. NPMI, random mouse movements in a circle. Beautiful. Like you should uh, get that package name right now on NPM MV. <laughs> uh, seeing this without sound is kind of weird. Are you using the chat translator or like, uh, um, I'm not muted, am I? I have sound. We're good. We're good. <laughs> All right. We'll do need needle in a haystack. It has the most votes. Um, yep. So. These other ones are fun, though. I don't want to lose them. They'll show up next time we search. All right. So typically what I like to do is create a file locally. Um, if you're new to Code Wars, <clears throat> you absolutely can write your code right here. Um, for me, it's just a little cumbersome because I like to solve it in multiple different ways. And I don't have to want to, I don't want to wait for like their container to execute my, my tests and such. So I'll bring it down. We'll bring down a function. And we'll bring down the sample tests. And um, we're just going to console log instead of test.assert equals. Cool. Let's lint it up. And I'm going to log this on a new line so it's easier to see. Cool, and um, I have this fancy tool called uh, Quaka.js that will actually run the JavaScript code inside of my editor. So I'm going to start it up. It's called Quaka, Q-U-O-K-K-A dot J-S, and it will actually show the result of any console log. So we can see right now my function is returning undefined because I haven't actually implemented anything. Um, so I need to write some code. Let's uh, let's just get like one solution going, and then I'll catch up on the chat. But so essentially, what we have to do is we're given this array, and we need to find the index of the element that is needle. Now, if you've been coding in JavaScript, you know that there's a built-in way to do this. We could literally just say return haystack.index of um, needle. And um, that should do it. Well, actually, it wants us to return a string, but we get 3, 5, and 30. So easy enough, right? But there, there's more ways to do this. Stick around. There's more There's more ways to do this. Um, but it wants us to return the string, so let's actually just store the index in a variable like that. And then we'll return uh, found the needle at position uh, index, like so. And uh, that seems to do it. Easy enough. But like I said, there's more more to it. Like, what's happening in this index of function? We could write our own index of function, which we probably will do. But uh, let's let's catch up. Uh, Myrtle is saying, uh, Mur "Murder Bill, Mister Terrible," <laughs> is saying. I started recording myself solving katas as well, mainly to watch my growth. It's surprisingly difficult to create good commentary while solving them. I commend you for how well you do it. I appreciate that, Mister Terrible. Um, and it really just comes with practice. Uh, before I was a live streamer. Um, I taught in person, like with real people in the flesh. <laughs> and that's how I got used to like talking through what I'm doing and stuff like that. Welcome, Yavuz, to Twitch. Uh, Gitsum says, your higher order functions videos with Tony helped me a lot to understand JavaScript. I'm glad to hear that. I, there was a comment in the Discord this morning as well. Um, if you go to coding.garden slash videos um, and you click newbie Tuesday yeah <laughs> you'll see some of the videos that we did uh, on higher order functions um, basically Tony was a complete and total noob he knew like almost nothing about programming and I paired with him and we worked through higher order methods and examples um, and so that was fun and then there's some other videos we did as well so you can check that out I've been binge watching your auth from scratch says Jai 
Would very much love to gain your thought process on GraphQL. Cool, yeah, I don't do much GraphQL, but it'll be fun to explore. Um, the auth from scratch was another thing I did with Tony. Uh, oh, it must have been you that talked uh, that mentioned in our Discord. But yeah, I, I would like to do a video on uh, apply call and bind because um, I haven't yet, and people have talked about it in the past. So this is great. I'm going to save it. That's there. I won't forget it. I'm not going to do it today, but soon. Thanks for the follow, Hork. Um, Pranjala is saying, use the two-pointer approach to solve this pri problem. Awesome. Thank you, Pranjala. So you actually recommended this when I was doing the reverse a string solution, and I actually didn't know what you were talking about, but now I know what you're talking about. Uh, essentially, we have two pointers. We start at the beginning and the end, and uh, we do an iterate, and both of the pointers move inwards. So we're kind of like, instead of having to iterate over the whole array, we, it takes half as much time because we're approaching the solution from, from both sides. So that's a great suggestion, and I will do that. OK, first, so we use this built-in index of method. That's great. But what's really happening here, let's actually write from scratch something that will iterate over this array and, and find that needle in the haystack. So we'll do this. We'll do this. And uh, let's, let's write out some comments. So um, we're not going to do the two-pointer approach first. First, we'll just do like, Basically, we need to iterate over the array and keep going until we find the needle. So um, we need a place to store the index. In JavaScript, that's a variable, but in general terms, it's a place. <laughs> uh, we then need to iterate over the haystack. So I say iterate here. We could use a for loop. We could use a while loop. We could use for each. We could do a lot of different things. But essentially, we need to go over this list of things then we need some logic inside of that for loop. If the current value is equal to um, needle, <laughs> then return the, well, actually we could, I think what we'll do here is we'll break out of the for loop. Um, so then break out of the for loop. This is interesting because there are actually multiple ways to do this, but basically, um, let's not break out immediately. Let's say, um, so if the current value is needle, that means we found it. So we'll store the current index, um, in the index variable and then break out of the for loop. And now that we're outside of the for loop, we should be able to just return, found the needle at position and then index easy enough. All right, let's implement it. So, um, I'm going to create a variable called index. And um, it's initially not going to have any value. And I'm making it a let because we need to, we will potentially need to change it. So inside of this for loop, we're going to need to overwrite this whatever, with whatever the index is. Um, first, I'll use a for loop. So um, we'll just say four. We need to start at the beginning, which is zero. We need to go while i is less than uh, haystack dot length. And uh, haystack is an array. So it has a length property, that's great. And then we will increment i. So we're gonna start at the beginning and we're gonna gradually look at each value inside of the for loop. And um, now we do our logic. So if the current value is equal to needle. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of times what I like to do inside of a for loop is actually put the current uh, value in the array inside of a variable. It makes it easier to, to look at, to talk about. So I can say something like, um, const current value equals haystack at i. Oh, haystack, how you doing? Hey, haystack. <laughs> um, so basically, we just take the index in the array uh, and put it into a variable. But now we can talk about it like it's a thing, current value, because it can be a little cumbersome to look at haystack bracket i. Your brain has to work a little bit harder. So we have that current value variable. Um, and now we need to check. So if current value is equal to needle. There's my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch. OK, so if the current value is equal to needle, we need to store the current index in the index variable. So we'll say uh, index equals i, because i is the current index that current value is defined at. Awesome. And now we need to break out of the for loop. So to do that, we literally just say break. And what will happen is the for loop will stop executing. It'll jump out 
and uh, go to like this line of code. And at that point, index should have been set. Uh, what is this complaining about? It's declared, but it's never read. We're about to read it. So now that we're outside of the for loop, we can do this. Uh, found the needle at position index, and that should work. So found the needle at position three, position five, position 30. Great. Um, so that's awesome. But um, let's 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 write our own index of function, right? So uh, we wrote this out. It's a specific to this problem, but we could generalize this and and basically do what the index of function is doing under the hood. So let's copy that. And um, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a function called uh, index of that takes in an array and the value that we're searching for, um, and then it really just does this logic. <laughs> So it does this. We're going to put that in there. And um, in this case, we're not iterating over the haystack. We're iterating over the array. And um, the current value is going to be array at i. And we're not com looking for needle. In the more general sense, we're looking for value. So we can say if current value is equal to the value that we're searching for, um, index equals i, and then break. And then at the end, we can just return index. Um, now, if you look at the definition of index of, if it doesn't find the element, it actually returns negative 1. So let's initialize that to negative 1. Because if we go over the entire array and we don't find that value, we're going to get back negative 1. Great. And so now, we can just say uh, const index equals our fancy index of function where we pass in the haystack and pass in that we're looking for the needle. And that should work. There we go. Very good. <laughs> All right, I'll catch up on the chat, but there's like a million other ways we could do this. So instead of a for loop, we could use a, uh, a for each. And then instead of a for each, we could use find. There's so much more, so much more, but let's catch up. Uh, Meeper is saying, good morning, CJ. Is it still snowing and freezing on your side of the state? Yeah, like my road outside of my house, like is just solid white <laughs> and it probably like froze overnight and there hasn't been any uh, plow that comes by. So I'm stuck. I'm stuck here for now. Hello, Dapu. Welcome. Thanks for the follow, Ajax. Uh, Biswajit is asking, what are my thoughts on Jamstack? I think it's cool. I, I don't really um, use it. So Jamstack is typically... Um, you build a website with like React or Vue, and then you have some sort of build process that will turn it into static files and can be hosted on a static file server. Um, I don't really do that much. It's a pretty cool concept. Maybe we'll explore it on the, the stream pretty soon. Uh, Carlos is saying you can return without a break. Absolutely, yeah. So we're going to explore that next. Um, I really just wanted to show the fact that you can break out of a loop. But yes, what, ultimately what we could do is just return the value right here, and that exits the, the function sooner. So we'll do that too. Uh, Yahoo's is saying, did you ever consider writing a script to scrape a code kata from Code Wars and automatically create a JavaScript file? Um, not really. It's not that much trouble to <laughs> copy the file name and create a new file name. But that would that would actually be fun to create, like a VS Code code katas extension. Depending on what's available in their API, we could even submit our solutions from VS Code. That would be crazy, huh? But yeah, it's a great idea. I'll save it. Um... <laughs> My ear says, why does for const x of some array work and not for const i equals zero, i is less than x, i plus plus? Um, it's so weird. Uh, and that's another thing. We could use a for of loop. So let's let's look at that. Um, well, not just not not yet. Okay, so we use the built-in index of. We did some manual iteration to find it. We generalized that solution to create our own index of function. Um, now let's take a look at like early return. And um, I'll just do it with our with our first example. So instead of breaking out of the for loop and having like a variable on top, um, we could do this. Let me get rid of all the comments. Um, yes. Yeah, so basically, the moment we found the needle, we know that i is the thing that we're looking for. So really, we could move our return statement in here. And then we don't need the break. We could literally just say, found the needle at position i. And then we can get rid of our index variable. So now, the moment it finds it, that return is going to exit the for loop, exit the function immediately, and return that string. So that's great. 
Um, I don't know if they said what should happen if we can't find the needle in the haystack. Let's see. I think the needle is always going to be in the haystack, at least for this problem, because it's it's an 8Q. It's a lot easier. Cool. So uh, that's a great thing. Um, you would use one or the other depending on what you need to do. Like if you know what the value is you need to return at this point, totally fine. But if you need to potentially have some logic after the for loop, you might use break and then you could have some logic down here that like uses the value that you created. So that's fine. Okay. Um, let's now use, um, I think find index is a thing. So, um, if we search for find index, yeah, this is a method on the array where you can um, pass in a function. So this is a higher order method. You pass in a function that uh, returns true if that's the element that you want, and the, ultimately that will return the index. So it's kind of similar to index of, but instead of just taking the value itself, you pass it a function. So let's do that. So um, right here we can say um, find index. This is gonna break because it says needle <laughs> needs to be a function. So we need a function that's going to take in uh, the current value. And I'll write it on two lines first, but then we'll see that this is an easy one liner. And ultimately this needs to return, is the current value equal to needle? And if it is, index is going to get stored in that variable, and then we get the right log. So found the needle at position three, five, 30, et cetera. Um, so this is nice if you aren't just searching for like a basic string value. Like in this case, I would probably just use index of, but if you need some more complex logic to find that index, this is where find index is gonna come into play and you can use a, pass in a function. You could do lots of stuff up here, like do more stuff here in order to actually find that index. Um, but yes, of course, this can be written on a single line. I know there, there are people thinking it. They're like, hey, why did you write that arrow function on two lines? I did it because I'm explaining. That's why I did it. But you could also write this. I have to zoom out for you to see it. Um, but in uh, ES 2015, uh, arrow functions can be written on a single line if they return that value. Um, we can make this a little smaller. We can call this like value. That's nicer. And also we don't need these parentheses if we only have a single parameter. So that's nice too. Cool, so there's find index. Um, what else? We could potentially use a reduce, but I don't really see a point in doing that because a reduce can't exit early. Um, so we would have to, we, we could re basically reduce the array to a single index that is the found index, but we would have to iterate over the entire array. Okay, so I'm gonna catch up on the chat and then we'll do what Pranjal suggested, which is the two-pointer solution, which is actually, uh, we could update our find our, our, our index of um, function to use it and our for loop function to use the two-pointer method. So instead of going from the beginning to the end, we approach it from both ends. And that's gonna be faster because um, instead of having to iterate over the whole array, we have two pointers and potentially we exit a lot sooner, like especially if the, in the index or the thing we're looking for is at the end of the array. Cool. All right, um, let's catch up. Thanks for the YouTube sub, Jerry, I appreciate it. Uh, yes sir, is watching my stream at work. That's good. Hopefully you're getting some, some work done too. Uh, Yavuz is saying, so this was the comment about I should scrape Code Wars to pull the file into VS Code, but yeah, I could I could pull in the functions and the tests and the comments and everything. Oh, try recursion. I like that too. Great great suggestion, Pranjal. <laughs> uh, let's do, yeah, Pranjal's got, Pranjal's got um, great suggestions today. We'll do it. Uh, Spacey is saying the Jamstack is great until you end up like me with a Jamstack blog s thing where a webhook has to set up to regenerate everything every hour to publish the post at certain times. Yes. So that's the thing about Jamstack is, is it is statically built. It's static files. So if you ever need to make updates, you have to trigger a rebuild. Um, things like, uh, what's that service? Net Netlify, that helps with it. You can hook up a GitHub repo to Netlify that is a Jamstack, whether it's like Gridsum or Gatsby. And every anytime you push to GitHub, 
it automatically rebuilds and redeploys your site. But that that is one thing about Jamstack. Thanks for the follow, Zero Droid. Good morning, Brooks. How's it going? Thanks for the YouTube sub, Vassail. Rahal is saying, wow, 20K, nice. I saw that huge shout out from Traversy. So happy this channel continue to, continues to grow. Yeah. Um, I mentioned it earlier. It's still the same channel. I'm still just me. <laughs> there are just more people here now. Uh, hello, MD. Welcome. And thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Aldo is asking, how do I make the editor show the output of the code? Uh, so this is a plugin called Quacka. Um, they do have a pro version. Right now, I'm just using the free version. Um, but it's really cool. You start it up, and um, it'll show you like your console logs. They have lots of cool things built in where you can just see like what is the result of the expression on a given line. The one limitation, though, is if you don't have the pro version, you can't import external modules. So like if you're importing, I don't know, Axios or some, some module from NPM, it'll, it'll stop working. They do have a free trial, and then the, the pro version does support uh, importing. So Quaka, Quaka is sweet. Uh, here we go. So JB has the uh, recursive solution. Let's take a look at that. Hello, Katoli. Now with sound. <laughs> okay. Oh, so I guess uh, I guess your sound was broken. I don't know. Uh, Pranjal, can you please help me with this problem? Uh, you can go leak code maximum length of a concatenated string with unique characters. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I don't know if I can solve it today. But um, it could be material for a future episode. So yes, I'll take a look. Waiting for the two-pointer method. It's about, it's about to be there. It's about to happen. <laughs> uh, thank you, Justice. Uh, thank you, Hubert. I appreciate that. When the uh, splart. How's it going? Como uh, wait, no. Uh, what, what? Spanish. Uh, que tal? <laughs> Uh, thanks for the sub, uh, Cass. Uh, JB says I have the two pointer solution too, but can't figure out how to see my submitted code Kata solutions. Well, we'll 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 derive it. So this suggestion came in from Pranjal. Thank you, Pranjal. Uh, use the two pointer approach to solve this problem. So for example, assign two pointers, one for the left side and one for the right side, and move them to check for the needle. Great. So let's basically let's take this solution that we did here. And we're going to rework it. Instead of just going from the beginning of the array to the end of the array, we're going to approach it from both sides. Let's do it. OK, we'll, we'll remove the comments. Um, so we still need a place to store the index. But now, instead of just having i, we need a left pointer and a right pointer. So um, we'll have left pointer. And that starts off as 0, because it's going to start off on the left. And then we'll have right pointer. And that's going to start off as length minus 1. So it starts at the very end. So I'll say haystack.length minus 1. Awesome. So uh, I said left. <laughs> Let. That's a JavaScript thing. So we have two pointers now. They're potentially looking at the two sides of the array. Uh, now instead of a for loop, we need a while loop. And we are going to iterate while the left pointer is less than the right pointer. So we're just going to keep on going. And then the moment they cross, we're done, basically done done searching. Um, for this particular problem, um, they probably should never cross, because eventually we're going to find the needle, because the needle is always in the haystack. Regardless, but this is really our condition. We basically keep on iterating. And then the moment they pass each other, um, that potentially means that we didn't find what we were looking for, um, so we would like return negative one or something like that. OK, so now there's not just one current value. There's a left value, <laughs> which is going to be haystack at the left pointer. And there is a right value, which is going to be haystack at the right pointer. And um, really, we, we kind of just need to do two comparisons. So if the. Here's my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch. Stretch. <laughs> so uh, if the left value is equal to the needle, then we need to say index equals um, left pointer. And then similarly, and actually, let's move the right here. If the right value.
is equal to the needle, uh, then the index equals the right pointer, break out of the loop, and ultimately return the index. Um, yeah, so this is this is a little, oh, <laughs> and then we actually need to change the pointers. Right now I have an infinite loop uh, because it's just going to keep doing this over and over again. Um, but basically after each iteration, we need to say uh, left pointer plus plus and right pointer minus minus. So that way they actually they actually move. We had an infinite while loop. It's okay. We got over it. Um, so now we we let's we start at the end. So we start at zero. Is this the needle? No. Is this the needle at the end? No. Move in one. So the left pointer increases and the right pointer decreases. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. They cross paths. We didn't find it. Um, in this case, uh, we will find it. Uh, uh, Martin is saying, what if the, the list is length one? Um, then this while loop will not iterate. Yeah, we, we would need a special condition up here that says like, if the length is list one, uh, is length one, let's just check the first value in the index. Um, I don't wanna do less than or equal to, I, actually we could, we could do less than or equal to, it wouldn't hurt um, because Ultimately, the left value and the right value are going to be the same, and the index is the same because. So let's say the length is uh, one, left pointer is going to be zero, right pointer is going to be zero because the length is one. Um, so this is going to iterate once, and then left pointer will increase to one, right pointer will decrease to negative one, and it will break out. So. Um, Pranjal has it <laughs> less than or equal to. So th this this solves it if there's only one in the array. In our case, we didn't have to worry about that, but that does it. Um, this is a little bit verbose. We could probably clean it up, but that's essentially the approach. We, we go from, from both sides. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, JB is saying using while it ends up really elegant. Um, I feel like this isn't that elegant. Uh, but maybe maybe we can make it better. I, I might actually just move on to another kata because yeah, I've been streaming for 43 minutes. We've been talking about finding a needle in a haystack for 43 minutes, so we got we got to keep going. Komen kwava. I don't speak French, but hello, uh, Semes. Welcome. Uh, thanks for the sub, Yanni. JB says I use less than or equal to because there's a possibility of the needle being in the middle of an odd numbered array. True, you're exactly right. Yes. So in um, in, in in the case of an odd numbered array, that's where we would need also need the less than or equal to because the left and the right pointer are going to be the same value. Yeah, good call. Uh, AWZ is asking, what level is this kata? This is just an eight Q. <laughs> uh, we solved it a while ago, but we're exploring different different ways of solving it. So initially, we just used index of, it's built into JavaScript, everybody knows it. Uh, then we showed potentially how you would do that from scratch. Then we showed, okay, what if we wanted to make our own index of method? This is what it might look like. Um, and then we used our own index of method. Um, and then we did a early return instead of break. So really just to show that you can break out of a for loop, but also you can return from a function which will also exit the for loop. We showed the find index function and this last one was the two-pointer approach. So instead of just going in this direction, we, we approached it from both sides. So this, this has been fun, fun. <laughs> yeah, you all got it. What if the length is list one or what if it's an odd length? Yeah. Uh, I've seen some people modify the pointer when accessing the array. Yeah, let's, let's get weird with it. Like I'd, I would never do this just because it's like, it's very terse and it can be hard to know what's going on if you see it happen, but yeah, let's do it. So what you can do is you can say uh, left pointer plus plus and left and right pointer minus minus, and then you can get rid of the assignment right here. And this, oh, no, this won't work. <laughs> so, um, well, I'd have to I'd have to redo my logic. So basically, what's happening is. Um, when you do something like this on in array accessing, first it will get the value, and that's the index you're going to access, and then it will do the modification, either subtracting or adding one. Um, the issue here, though, is I need to compare it and then return the original value, 
Um, and because we're modifying it, I'm returning the value before it. So I guess we could return <laughs> uh, left pointer minus one and right pointer plus one. That does it. Yeah, three, three, five, and 30. Um, but th this is weird. Don't ever do this. Uh, there, there could be weird side effects too. Could you make a hey stack pun and implement it using only a while and pop? Yeah, why not? <laughs> so we'll, <laughs> we'll use a uh, we'll use a stack. Uh, Katoli is saying uh, we could decrement or increment first, but that decrements before accessing, wouldn't it? Let's try it. Um, and if it decrements before accessing, then we need to initialize our values to be like one less than they actually are. So, uh, if we do plus plus first, and minus minus first, um, does this work? Three, oh, it works! Why does it work? Okay, so left pointer is gonna be zero. Yeah, Justice is saying you can also implement two pointer methods recursively. Yeah, so we could, and the, the yeah, basically we do the the two pointer approach, but we do it recursively. Um, there is a recursive solution that was provided by JB. We'll we'll look at that in a second. Um, yes, why does early decrement work? Yeah, why? <laughs> let's let's do this. We're gonna debug it. So I'm gonna disable Quaka. Um, so I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna add a breakpoint right there, and we're gonna spin up the debugger. Why? Why does this work? Um, needle in a haystack. That's cool. Let's go, Mr. Debugger. Or Mrs. Debugger. I shouldn't assume anything. Um, okay. Index starts off as undefined. That's great. Left pointer gets assigned zero. Right pointer gets assigned the length which is nine. So on the left-hand side, we can see all of our local variables. We have the point, left pointer, the right pointer. Um, right now, right pointer is zero. I mean, sorry, left pointer is zero, right pointer is, is nine. So we'll go in. We have our haystack. Left pointer is zero. And so uh, it's, it's, it's doing this one. So we should see that the left value should be the, the string. But I'm really curious how it even shows this, but let's see. Go in. Oh, oh, it skips the first value. Yep. So check, take a look. So the left value um, is one, two, three, one, two, four, two, three, four. And that's the second value in the array. So we've actually skipped the first value and we're going to skip the last value. So it worked because needle wasn't the first or the last element in the array. Yeah. And, um, and so basically we need to make this, we need to start it off as negative one and this to start off as the length for this to actually work. But that, that's cool that we found this. So now if we look at right value, we should see that right value is the second to last value in this array that we passed in, which it is. We we skipped false. Yep, you got you got it, Spacey. It's only working because the needle isn't the first or the last value. Cool. So uh, if we tried it where needle is the first value, this would break. And so what we could do is set the left pointer equal to negative one and the right pointer equal to the length, and that will work because on the first iteration, it's going to um, increment, which sets this to zero, and then we, and then we look at the value. But let's let's actually test it. Haystack zero, and what if needle was right here instead of right here? <laughs> um. So if we if we log this. It should say found the needle at position zero when we pass in haystack zero. And then we'll start up Quaka. Yep, found it at position zero. Um, but if we went back to um, zero and haystack at length minus one, it should say, what will it say? You potentially get a prize if you can tell me what it's going to console log. So found the needle at position what? And that's if the needle is at position zero.
Nan? Maybe. I don't think so. I think it's... I think it's undefined. Yeah, uh, Scrickmad says it's undefined. I think it's undefined. Let's see. <clears throat> and Nan usually only occurs when you try to perform some math operation on something that's not a number. Uh, in this case, um, index is initialized as undefined. It will do the iteration, never overwrite index, and so at this point, index should still be undefined. Yeah, found needle at position undefined. Very good. Um, okay, last thing we'll do is we'll look at the recursive solution that was provided by JB. And then we'll move on because an hour is a long time to talk about a very, a very simple problem. Um, let's see. Cool. All right. So <laughs> we're going to um, make this a little bit easier to read and try to describe what's going on here. But, um, oh, we called it recursive needle. Let's. Um, Call it find needle just so our, our test below will actually run this function. <laughs> JB says I'm crossing my fingers, I didn't test it. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, maximum call stack size exceeded. <laughs> um, so uh, let's let's try to fix it. So basically, we we have a we have an infinite loop because we're not breaking out of uh, uh, find needle. Oh no, yeah, we'll fix it though, and and this this will be good because we can look at the recursive solution. So. Uh, find needle, um, and Gatoli I think has the solution. So, um, um, find needle takes in the array, and uh, if you've never seen this syntax before, this is uh, new in ES twenty fifteen. This allows you to um, set a default value for an argument to a function. So, um, if we didn't pass in i, which we don't on the first iteration, we're going to default it to zero. So we'll say if the array at zero is equal to needle return zero um, and it in um, in this case it worked found the needle at position zero beautiful but what if it's at position three that's when we get this infinite loop so um, we'll actually say find needle array and then I plus plus and I think it totally has it has it absolutely right so we, we saw this a second ago basically what happens here is it will invoke find needle with zero and then increment I and so now we have i equals zero again. And then we'll say invoke find needle with zero again. So if you increment it first before calling it, um, that gets rid of the, the, the overflow because uh, now before it calls find needle, it's gonna increment i to one and then invoke find needle and then it will increment i to two, et cetera. So good call, Katoli. <laughs> no, no worries, JB. Um, but yeah, that that this is like a, super small solution, but ultimately it works. And, and what happens here is um, each time <clears throat> we are passing in the same array, but we're telling it to look at the next index in the array. Um, so if you're not familiar with recursion, this can look a little weird, but essentially the function gets called with the array in zero. And we say, is the value at array index zero? No, it's not. Let's try again. We're going to call the function again with the array in index one. Is the value we're looking for at array index one? No, it's not. Let's call the function again with the array in index two. Um, and it keeps doing that over and over. Um, so that's that's the recursive solution, or one recursive solution. Um, like, I think, who it was? Was it uh, Justice? Justice suggested that we, we could use the two-pointer approach with recursion as well. I think we're going to stop talking about this problem, but... That's, a, that's an exercise for you to try. Um, but th the thing to think about with recursion is pretty much, I won't say pretty much, any problem that can be solved with a loop can also be solved with recursion. Um, recursion is just a way of using the call stack, which is a mechanism of how JavaScript executes your code. It uses the call stack as the loop, where essentially we're, we're, we're pushing function calls onto the stack that are doing the work for us, which is similar to having the logic inside of a for loop. All right, let's take a stretch. <laughs> and then we'll we'll do the next one. Yeah, terminal is saying, now recursively with two bound cursors, that would be the two-pointer approach. Okay, we're done. We're done now, we're done. And I am going to submit uh, the very first one we did. It's the easiest. And if you're a JavaScript developer, um, this, is, this is the one that I would, I would probably reach for because we just need to find the index of the needle. Um, okay, let's try it. Sample tests. 
We're good to go there. We'll do an attempt. And it's good. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, let's catch up on the chat. Oh, yeah. I didn't solve it this way, but this is a great comment, Spacey. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it in the file. Um, we could use a stack to pop the needle. Cool. Yeah. And thanks for the uh, uh, Twitch follow, Krisu. Uh, Strict Matt is saying, it would be interesting to compare the performance of the two-pointer approach versus the regular one. Yeah. And ultimately... Um, it's, it's definitely, like, it definitely, there's a possibility that there are less operations that need to occur. Are there? Um, where, where's our two-pointer solution? Yeah, like this one. So, in, in the approach where we're, where we're going from the left to the right, that is, a uh, big O of N. Like, in the worst case, we have to go all the way to the end of the array, iterate all the way and look at every single value, if needle is the last value in the array. So that's, in worst case, big O of n. With the two-pointer approach, uh, best case, which is what, like omega or theta? I don't, I don't know my big O stuff, but best case scenario, the needle is at the either the beginning or the end of the array because then we don't even iterate. We literally check the beginning of the end, and the end, we found the needle, we're done. Um, similarly, best case scenario for the for loop is that the needle is the first index in the array because we just look at the first value and we're done. Um, but it's it's potentially, I would say it's probably more performant because <laughs> instead of iterating the whole way, we could potentially stop iterating three in from the end or something like that. Yeah, worst case is still big O of n, but there are some best case scenarios depending on where the, where the needle is. Uh, Mayer says, also with the two-pointer thing, you could pick a random pivot and start moving the pointers to opposite extremes. This would help uh, if the element is located in the middle. Yeah, so you could start uh, splitting up your array and then using two pointers on portions of the array. Then you could use like parallel processing. So you could do it like split the array into four chunks because you have four cores on your computer and each core then has two pointers that it's looking for and they have some way of telling each other to stop if the other one found it. Yeah, we, we this is like... This is an AQ. It's a super simple problem, but we could, there's a lot of different ways we could uh, improve it and, and all that good stuff. Good morning, Terminal. And thanks for the follow, uh, Sergi. Sergio. Hello, Nico. Welcome. Justice says use for each. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to do that just real quick because it'll, it'll be easy enough. So basically, if we take our solution that was doing the for loop, let's do it right here. Um, instead of doing a for loop, and especially, well, the thing about a for each is you can't break out of it, so it's not as ideal, but it should still work because in these scenarios, the needle only occurs once in the array. So what we can do is we can say haystack dot for each. This gets a function which will get access to the current value and then can do something. So basically, we just take our logic here, put it in the for each, and should be done. Um, can't access current value before it's initialized? What are you talking about? I is not defined. Oh, you're right. Okay. But a for each also gives you access to the index. Um, and then we can say index equals i. And this should still work. Position 0, 3, 5, 30. Yep. Um, but it's interesting to see that essentially a for loop, uh, a for each just takes your for loop. You got to know a little bit about functions and higher order methods, but now you get a function that takes in the value of each value in the array, and then you can do something with it. So for each gives you access to the index. You also get access to the full array itself. Um, and you can also pass in the this value of the function itself. I'm using an arrow function, so in this case, the this value wouldn't even wouldn't even do anything. But no, oh, we, we still need i. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, we did that. Thanks for the follow, Tuskamar Dow. Welcome. Yes. What? <laughs> um. Yeah, and Spacey got it earlier. Why the? Increment or decrement first was working. Uh, thanks for the sub, Anish. 
Man, it was it was undefined. Good job, Shriek Mad. It was undefined. Uh, <laughs> uh, welcome to Twitch, Krisu. Uh, Jim says, hey, CJ, I've been watching your channel for a while, and I really enjoy it. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, Hassan says, in VS Code, you can do Control Alt Arrow Up or Down instead of Control C or V. Yep, I do that sometimes. Um, yeah, so if you do um, in, in on a Mac, it's Alt. That will move that line of code up. I don't always like that because it can be tricky. It's like, okay, I'm in the for each. It indents it for me. What if I go one? I don't know. I, I, a lot of times I like to copy and paste because I can be specific about where it goes. If it's a one-liner, yeah, alt, alt up and down all day. <laughs> but pro tip, thank you. <laughs> uh, SMS says the recursive solution takes space memory with the call stack. Yeah, so every function call has to be pushed onto the stack, which takes up more memory, versus just accessing an index in an array inside of a for loop. Thanks for the sub, Nima. <laughs> uh, thanks for the follow, Jaffy Cake. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, we did it. Thanks for the follow, George Walt. Um, yeah, worst case is still big old in. We know this. Uh, thanks for the follow, Blue Toot. Welcome to the stream. Um, oh, Katoli says, now that you've mentioned the parallel processing thing, I've started. That's great. Yeah, so the other day on the live stream, uh, we found out about thread workers in Node. Uh, uh, worker threads, yeah. This actually allows you to have a shared uh, memory array or buffer between separate threads. Um, so you can actually do uh, parallel processing in Node.js. Um, yeah, so you can do like post message, but I do believe you have access to the same memory. So instead of having to like post message, you could literally operate on the same array uh, in multiple threads, which is pretty, pretty sweet. Thanks for the sub, Jordan. <laughs> um, JB says, return haystack math, math .floor at math.random times haystack.link. Just keep clicking submit until it guesses them all. Yeah, that's like BOGO sort, if you've ever heard of that. Hello, Miku. Thanks for the sub, Alan. Um, oh, my name is pronounced Miko, not Miku. Sorry. Hello, Miko. Welcome. <laughs> multi -threading, multi threaded sorting algorithms. Wow. Um, Terminal says, I'm still bummed that you can't easily break out of an each map or reduce. Yeah. So um, for that, there is um, sum or every. So if we look at array sum, S-O-M-E, not S-U-M. Did my laptop just die? <laughs> I think my laptop just died. <laughs> I need to plug it in. Um. Uh, did anybody see my battery going down? <laughs> because you could have told me. You could have told me. All right. In the meantime, oh, yeah, we got to wait for that to come back. Did, did anyone? Here, I'll pull up the chat on my other. <laughs> I can't control the mouse. Oh, no. We're stuck. <sighs> did anyone see my battery dying? Oh, man. It's got to charge for a second. Okay, this is unfortunate. But I'll pull up the chat on the other screen. Okay, there's that live chat. Oh. Rip. Rip. <laughs> did did anyone see my battery? Let's see. Uh Akram, okay, it's starting. <laughs> my computer's back up. Akram says, very informative video. Thank you very much. Uh Hassan says, can we use the map function? Uh in this scenario, I wouldn't use the map function because we're not trying to create a new array. 
um, we're basically just trying to find a value inside of the array. All right, we're back. Let's give it, let's give it a second. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so map is typically if you want to take an array of one thing and turn it into an array of another thing. Uh, in this scenario, we didn't want to do that. We just wanted to find the index inside of, of the array itself. Um, we did use and showed an example of for each because that will iterate. We're not creating a new array, but eventually we can find the index that we're looking for. Here we go. We're back. <laughs> I realize I didn't play the ukulele. Catoli says that's why you should make a chat OBS plugin. Um, I I like my I like my little uh, chat manager right here. Uh, Terminal's got the clip. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, but the the last comment from Terminal was I hate that you can't return early from uh, for each map or, or reduce. Um, this is where you could potentially use um, array dot sum. Depends on the scenario. So. Array.sum method tests whether at least one element in the array passes the test implemented by the provided function. So this will, uh, it's a higher order method, so you can pass in a function, but it exits early. So the moment it finds the thing that satisfies the, the sum function, it, it exits, and it doesn't have to iterate over the whole array. Um, similar thing with every. So every test to see if every element in the array um, uh, satisfies a given value or a given expression sorry um but every will exit early the moment one element doesn't so there's every there's some those those could potentially help <laughs> i'm surprised people still stuck around during that that blackout <laughs> uh danielle is asking is there a simple or straightforward way to scramble the items in an array like randomize their order from their original order um i've never thought about that um there's probably an algorithm to do it um you could um, I mean, this is like a fun, this is a fun challenge. Yeah, now I'm thinking about how you do it. So maybe you have a swap method. Swap takes in the array and two indices, and it just swaps those two values inside of the array. Um, and then you could just run that a hundred times, generating two random indices every time. That would do it. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but that's a very interesting question. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Akram. Uh, and I, I mentioned about the map function. So I'll show really quick. Um, we used uh, for each. I mean, technically, you could use map. Map is going to work in the same way because map will execute this function for every element. In this scenario, I wouldn't use map because it does create a new array, and, and we don't really need a new array. Cool. Let's keep on moving. Uh, thanks for the sub, Arnold. <laughs> Hello, Dirk Uh Yeah, pick a random index with math.random, do a swap, repeat. Hello, Bob. Uh, we're doing Code Wars Code Katas. Uh, we've been streaming for about an hour, but we came up, let's, let's see how many solutions we found. We found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We found 10 different ways to solve the same problem. <laughs> yeah. I would say swap. Swap with two random indices over and over. Hello, Shahid. Welcome. A <laughs> non-thread safe memory is scary. Yeah. Thanks for the sub, MD uh, Turkle. Adapter to the rest. Yeah, I should have plugged in to begin with. Was any, like, I get nobody sent me a message, but you all can see my battery. Right? You could have told me. Why didn't you tell me? You had one job. Not really. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Hello, Danielle. <laughs> Hello, Andrew. All right, this is, this is when I lost power. So, yeah. Uh, no, no worries, everyone. Yeah. Okay, let's watch the clip, because that was funny. Yeah. So um, for that, there is um, sum or every. So if you look at array sum, S-O-M-E, not S-U-M. Did the <laughs> laptop just die? <laughs> Did the laptop just die? Great, great clip, Terminal. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hello, Domenico. Welcome. Thanks for the sub, Aaron. Thanks for the sub, Ruzi. Uh, she says, I'm here from the 20 plus YouTube channel to follow a video by Traversy Media. And what a good coincidence that I started Code Wars today. There you go. Yeah, so Code Wars is awesome. 
Um, if you go to github.com slash coding garden slash code dash katas, you can see all of the ones that I've solved. Um, and there is that playlist on my channel. Um, I would recommend you try to solve them first, but if you ever get stuck, you can always see how I, how I solved it. Hello, Dion. Uh, Katoli says, there's an algorithm. Search on Wikipedia for randomization, and it should show up. I would check that out, because I've never tried to do that before. Hello, Anton. Thanks for the follow, uh, Deprog. All right, next kata. Um, I have roughly th 30 or 45 minutes. Let me double check my calendar. Yeah, I got, I got like 45 minutes. So we'll, we'll try to solve one more. Uh, let's do a 7Q, which is a little bit harder than an 8Q, but we'll vote on which one I should solve. I don't, I don't like that. I've, I've looked at this one before, and it's worded very interestingly. Uh, find the divisors of a number, sum of a numbers from 0 to n, flatten, it's kind of like smoosh. If, you, if you've been in the JavaScript community a while, you'll know that smoosh was a, uh, basically they, they, they were trying to add the flatten array to the, uh, a flatten function to the array. And uh, people didn't like that it was called uh, flatten. Is it just called flat now? Yeah, so the flat method creates a new array with all subarrays elements, subarray elements concatenated into it recursively up to the specified depth. Cool, so they, I guess they decided to name it flat instead of flatten. But the reason they didn't call it flatten is because there's this very popular JavaScript library that actually modifies the JavaScript prototype, and it had a function called flatten. And people were like, oh, well, if it's now implemented in JavaScript, it's going to override the default behavior of that library. It was a big mess. And then the suggestion was we should just call it smoosh instead of flatten. But ultimately, we called it flat. <laughs> uh, but that's probably what that one does. Uh, get key value pairs as arrays. That will be fun. And um, remove anchor from URL. Okay, let's look at all of these. So uh, complete the keys and values function so that it takes in an object and returns the keys and values as separate arrays. So given this, you passed an object, you need to return an array with two arrays inside of it. The first array has all of the keys. The second array has all of the values. Beautiful. Uh, remove the anchor from the URL. So complete the function or method so that it returns the URL with anything after the anchor. So this gets passed in, anything after the anchor gets removed. This gets passed in, there is no anchor. Very good. Uh, finding the divisors of a number. So find the number of divisors of a positive integer in. Random tests go up to n equals uh, 500,000. So um, given a number, we need to find all of the divisors and return the number of divisors. Um, I don't know how to do that, so <laughs> we would need to look it up. I did it a while back in school, but I'd have to look up how do we find the divisors. Um, sum of numbers from 0 to n. So we want to generate a function that computes the series starting from 0 and ending until the given number following the sequence. Cool. Which is created by 0, 0 plus 1, 0 plus 1 plus 2, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Okay, so each number is the sum of all previous numbers before that index, I guess. And so we're given n, and we need to return what is the last number in, in that series. That's also very interesting. And this last one, flatten. So write a function that flattens an array of objects into a flat array. Um, maybe this isn't exactly flattened, but... Um, yeah, so we're given an array of arrays of potentially more arrays, and we need to return a single array that has all of the values inside of it. That'll be cool, too. All right, we're going to vote on what to solve. Which 7Q should I solve? Up first, get the keys and values uh, as arrays. Uh, there we go. Mono has the instant solution. <laughs> n times n plus 1 divided by 2, I think for uh, this one, probably. Okay, but this first one is uh, key value pairs as arrays. Remove the anchor from the URL. Find the 
find the, the divisors of a number. Like I said, I don't know how to do that, but we'll figure it out. I've done it before for math class. Oh, that's probably really easy. <laughs> you just iterate and then every any time it's uh, a number divided by that number, uh, uh, mod that number. So if the remainder of the division is zero, it's a divisor. E no, that, that's way too easy, too easy. But if you want me to do it, we'll do it. Uh, sum of numbers from zero to n. And the last one, flatten. There we go. There's the pull. Uh, the uptime bot is not working. I've been uptime up. <laughs> I've been up. I've been up for an hour and uh, seventeen minutes. There you go. Please vote now. Thanks for the sub, Chan. Appreciate it. Yeah, Spacey says, I'd almost forgotten about Smooshgate, the price you pay for breaking for not breaking the web. <laughs> yeah, let's just search for the term Smooshgate. Hashtag Smooshgate. What the smoosh happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll share this link because it's, it's hilarious. People were up in arms. I think there, there's a library called, like, I think it's Moo Tools. The article probably mentions it, but essentially that was like a really popular library. Everyone was using it. It already had a function called flatten and they modify that library, modified the object prototype, which you should never do. Yeah, mood tools. <laughs> cool. Uh, thanks for the solo, follow Solitude TV. Hello, Ilana, welcome. Yeah, this is probably the solution for that uh, sum of numbers from zero to n. We'll save it. Hello, Jitesh. Hello, Krisu. Yep, no uptime. <laughs> uh, one hour, 18 minutes is what I have. Hello, Jitesh. Wait, I already said hello. But um, you missed a 7Q. So we solved this problem called a needle in a haystack. We solved it in like 10 different ways. We used the two-pointer approach. JB submitted a recursive solution. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, but now we're voting on which one we should do here. Cool. And thanks for the follow, Theta Storm. Uh, Deanna is saying flatten can be done using array dot reduce. I agree. Yeah, I agree. There's only twelve votes. There's a lot more than twelve people watching. Should I share the the thing again? Um. This. Can it? Recursively, I think. But it's actually hard to, for me to think about how I would solve that flatten problem without recursion. But it, it should be possible. It's just that you never really know how deep the arrays are. We could set a maximum, like a maximum depth of three or four without a recursive solution, but a recursive solution can, can go infinitely deep. Yeah, nested reduces, but like I said, you'd have to figure out how many levels deep do you need to go, whereas a recursive solution can just like go forever, go way deep. <laughs> Uh, array dot flat infinity works better. Yeah, so you basically tell it to just keep going. And I would assume that they have a recursive solution if they do that. Yeah. Ashish is asking or saying performance of various array loops. Is it something to be considered while working with arrays? Uh, it depends. Um, typically, when you're building websites, you're not really dealing with arrays that are that long. So if you're writing JavaScript for front end, oh, well, you don't got to worry about this. Um, and we're talking about like a for loop versus for each map filter reduce. Um, I think it's actually been shown in some browsers for each is actually faster than a regular for loop. Um, and that's just because of some of the optimizations that happen in the JavaScript engine. Um, so I would say 
if you're working with arrays that are less than a few thousand items in length, you don't have to care. Um, if they're longer than that, potentially. I don't really worry about performance. <laughs> I just write it the best way I think I can, and then I'll worry about performance when that becomes an issue. Yeah. Thanks for the sub, Kevin. Thanks for the follow, GCR DMZ. Uh, post Postal Rat saying is saying, I'd like to see where 4H is faster. I doubt it ever is. Like, like, and here's the thing. Those, um, what do you call them? The benchmark tests that people post online? They may or may not be valid. There, 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 are, there are certain things that their benchmark might be doing that favor something like for each. But if you if you just search for it, you'll see people have done uh, some benchmarkings for it. Yes, but we could implement our own split method. We've never done that before. <laughs> Is that the one that's winning? Vote on something else. Come on. Yeah, Mr. Terrible is saying a for loop is more than twice the speed of a before each in C sharp. Yeah. Um like I said, I I I, I make no claim to it. <laughs> um but if you look if you look online, people have done benchmarks. Um Ricky is saying, for each doesn't await. For of does. Yeah. So um uh, this is getting into the idea of like using promises or using async await with something like a higher order method. Yeah, so if you if you do like an await, or even if you do like a some promise dot thin inside of a for each, it's not gonna wait for that promise to resolve. It's just gonna execute every single function. Um, it's gonna execute the function for every value in the array, regardless. And it's not gonna wait for the previous one to finish if there was like a promise inside of it. Um, but if you do a for loop, for loop, or for of with an await inside of it, that actually will halt execution to resolve the promise before it goes back around to to continue iterating in the for loop. Um, there are there are ways to use a higher order method to wait for the previous to resolve before you do the next one. It's not that pretty though. I mean, it's doable though. Yeah. You can do async for each is too. I mean, you can, but it won't wait for the previous one to finish. Thanks for the follow, Drasilis. Okay. Remove the anchor from the URL. Uh, this, I mean, is this going to be the winner? It's going to be pretty easy. I mean, I guess I only have thirty minutes, but we could we could implement split from scratch. Um. Yeah. We need more votes. Look. My dashboard says there are 70 people watching on YouTube and 30 people watching on Twitch. I don't know how accurate that is, but uh, I'm going to give you two minutes to access a chat manager somehow. It could be that you're watching on a TV or you're watching on a mobile device where you cannot access this poll. But I'm going to give you time. I'm going to give you <laughs> I'm going to give you two minutes to find the chat, click the link, vote. And then we'll do it. I have no problem implementing remove the anchor, but some people might think that it's not as interesting. So you have two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dirk Rall says David Walsh, Walsh Moo Tools for some reason. Um, they talked about security on the web a bit. Everyone vote. <laughs> uh, thanks for the, the sub, Paul. Oh, we got a few more. Okay, now it's now it's a tie. It's a tie between remove the anchor and flatten. Who's going to win? Hold on. I, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait, Lynn. And welcome, Lynn. <laughs> There's my break timer anyways. All right, I'm going to I'm going to walk around too for just cuz I've been sitting for an hour and a half. So, I'll be back vote now.
<laughs> All right, it looks like we're gonna do remove the anchor from the URL, but that's fine. Ricky is saying, I'm having trouble with the context modal menu. How do I hide it when I click outside the element? There is no event for this, or is there? I think I think I see what you're saying. So like you're building an app and you have a like a right click menu like this and you want this to hide if you click outside of it. It's definitely possible. Like you you could uh basically add a click handler on the entire document and then inside of that click handler um you can check to see if the click was within the context menu element. Um yeah, you can you inside of the the click event for the document, it'll give you the closest element, and if it's outside of it, you trigger some function or change some variable that closes the context menu. That's one way to approach it. Um, if you're using component libraries, like in Vue, I think Vueify has like a outside click listener thing you can use. But if you had to implement it from scratch, that's how you'd do it. Cyber. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's that's the unfortunate thing about Twitch is um, the chat the chat doesn't save. So if, if you're new, uh, or actually, did somebody send the link? Oh, man. OK, here, I'll send it, and I will give Cyber um, or anyone else <laughs> um, a chance to, to vote. Because it's not over yet. We could do another one. Wait, that's the wrong thing. Oh, Dirk Earl is saying, it's a small show done on YouTube by the Mozilla devs. Um, let's check it out. Uh, David Walsh Smoosh. So this is one specific episode about it. Um, is it David Walsh? Is this some other David Walsh? <laughs> I, I lost your message. Can you send me, well, like, what is the name of the, the, the show? Because I don't think I saw that in your message, or I, I didn't recognize it if I did. Uh, Pastelarat says, you may be able to use focus. Yes, yeah, so you could. And that was for the, the problem um, that Ricky was having, having, but yeah. Anchor is still winning. Oh, Flatten has won. I'm not going to. So I, I like things to win by at least two votes. <laughs> because it's not fair if it only wins by one vote. And remove the anchor has been winning for the majority. This is like when the, you know, the, like the horse just like sticks its nose out to win the race. Uh, Terminal says, you could have a transparent element with an ID you have an event on. It would cover the rest of the page or have one on the body tag. Yeah, so if, if you put a click handler on the document, you don't need a transparent element um, because the way um, click events work is um, it's delegation. Is it bubbling? I don't know. Those two terms are used. I, I should probably know this, but basically when you when you click an element, it bubbles up to the actual element. So a click handler is initially filed, fire, fired on the document. Then it bubbles up and a click handler is filed on the next element up that is within your click region and then the next element and then the next element. Um, so that's, that's called event bubbling. But ultimately, if you put a click handler on the lowest element, which is the document or the, the body, it should call your function. Thanks for the sub, Jagat. Yeah. Global click handler. Yep. Thanks for the sub, Tanvir. Thanks for the sub, uh, Corneliu. The Google Chrome dev channel? Is that what it is? Oh, the script in style show. I see. I saw that in your message. It didn't register with, with me that that was like actually a YouTube thing, but let's check it out. Yes. Um, search. Smoosh. David Walsh. Oh, Kyle Simpson was on the show. That's great. Um, it's interesting. They only have four hundred and twenty subscribers. Um. It's on there somewhere, but check out uh, Script and Style Show. 
<laughs> Flatten is winning. <laughs> All right, we're going to call it there. We're going to call it there because it's winning by two votes. I'm sorry, everyone that voted for Remove the Anchor. Oh, I thought this was in reference to what we were talking about, Smoosh, earlier. <laughs> like, Smooshgate. Regardless, check out, check out the show that Dirk Rall mentioned. Um, okay, we're going to do Flatten. It's rigged. And like I said, I can I can kind of only think of recursive solution for this. So it's going to be hard for me to think of how to do this without recursion. Because with recursion, it's actually very easy. Um, cool. Hello, Tenbeer. Thanks for the sub first last case. <laughs> uh, Salmon is asking, can I do more Svelte with Sapper? That would be interesting to explore. Uh, because I have, I have built a few like very simple apps with Svelte, but Sapper is the more full-featured thing of Svelte that includes server-side rendering and a router and different things like that. Um, so that, that would be fun for a future stream. Hello, Ed. Welcome. Um, let's see. Can we have like a pile of papers so every time you Oh, like Smooshgate. Okay, cool. So this is on the Google Chrome developers. Just search for hashtag Smooshgate. <laughs> and uh, this is very relevant because Flatten kind of deals with uh, Smooshgate. What show was I talking about? I don't know. <laughs> Hello, Miko. I said your name right, I think. Yeah, I didn't even think about it. I could have just been Rickrolled right now. I just clicked that link. <laughs> All right, let's do it. We're going to do Flatten. So I'm going to create a new file locally. Uh, it's called Flatten1. So apparently there's another kata on Code Wars that's also called Flatten. New file, flatten1.js. We'll pull in our function. Um, I will do that because <laughs> um, I want to be able to redefine it and not have weird issues happen. OK. And then here are our tests. We're going to change them to be console.log. run our linter to change these to single quotes and here let's log it like this so it's going to be easier to see Mm-hmm. Very good. Okay. Um, so if I start up uh, Quaka.js, which is a tool that runs my code inside of the editor, right now we can see that the function returns undefined because I'm not returning anything. And ultimately, we are given an array, and we need to um, take all of the nested arrays inside of that array and turn it into just one array. Um, Um, so in the simplest case, we're just given an array with nothing inside of it. We just return an empty array. Another simple case is we have an array with no nested arrays. We just return that array itself. Then it gets tricky. We have an array with one array that has the, this in it, one array that has this in it, and one array that has this in it. Um, so um, ultimately, we return one array with all of the values inside of it. I prefer single quotes, Ashish. Um, and similarly, it gets a little bit trickier. What if you have an array inside of an array? Oh, beautiful. It only goes one level deep, right? Look at that. It only, it only goes one level deep because inside of this nested array, it's an array, and the result only has one array in it. So this is smoosh or flatten with a depth of one. Too easy. Way too easy. OK, here's what, here's what we'll do. So we need a place to store the flattened array. OK, so it'll start off as like empty or something like that. Basically, we're going to need to build, build this up. Then we will iterate over the array that was passed in. And um, uh, 
we need some conditional logic. So if the current value is an array, then we need to iterate over the elements of the array and push into our flatten array. Um, if the current value is not an array, then we'll just push it into the array. So if not, push value into array. Easy enough. And then we will return the flattened array. That should do it. Um, and I didn't realize it, but it is only one level deep. So even though this is a nested array, we just have the first value. Um, and like in this case, the first value is an array of arrays. So we just put each array in the resulting array. <laughs> um, cool. All right. So let's let's solve it. So let's say we have a um, um, a variable. So a place to store the flattened array. Let's call this flattened. This starts off as an empty array. Now we're going to iterate over the array that was passed in. Um, for this, I'm going to use a for loop, but we can absolutely do this with a, uh, a for each with a reduce, and we'll do that. We'll do that next. But now we'll do this. So we'll say um, let uh, we'll do a for loop. Let i equal zero. Well, i is less than array dot length. We want to iterate while i is um, oh no no sorry. <laughs> we'll increment i on each iteration, and then we need to do this this business. So if the current value is an array, um, there are a lot of different ways to check this, but the way that I like to do it is you can say array dot is array and pass in um, the value. So let, let's store the current value in a variable. So we'll say current value is array at i. And we'll say if current value is an array, then we need to iterate over that array and push in all of the elements to the flattened array. Um, else, so like if it's not, then we just need to uh, push into the flattened, uh, push into the flattened array. So we'll say uh, flattened dot push um, current value. So um, did I spell it wrong? Flattened, flattened, flat. I think that's how you spell flattened. Oh well. Um, so yeah, so if it's not an array, we just push the value in. We're good to go. Um, now we need to handle this scenario. So if if the value itself is an array, we need to iterate over the value and push each of its values into the array. So for now, just going to do like a nested for loop. This is potentially where the recursive solution could come into play. Um, so we'll say we'll have a for loop. We'll use a different iterator. Let's say uh, j that equals zero, while j is less than current value dot length and then j++. And then inside of here, uh, we will say uh, flattened dot push. And we'll, let's call this inner value. And that's going to be equal to the current value bracket j. So that's going to give us the value inside of the nested array. And now we can push this inner value into the flattened array. There's my break timer, but this is the solution. Now, now it gets fun. Now we can use a reduce. We can use recursion, um, all that good stuff. So uh, ultimately, we return the flattened array. And let's see. So we get the empty array. Very good. We get an array with just one, two, and three. Very good. We get an array that has only the values themselves. Very good. We get an array that. Um, has that like nested array and like that nested string. Very good. And on this last one, we get an arrays, 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 arrays. Cool. Um, I'm actually, I'm just going to throw this into Code Wars really quick because it, it looks like it's working, but I just want to verify. I don't really have a, a deep equality function available to me right now. So if I said double equals, it's going to say false because these are two different arrays that we're comparing. Um, I could actually I could do this. I could say two string <laughs> is equal to this dot two string. That's true. Okay, so that one worked. Um, and then this one, it's also very tricky. That dot two string. 
and that's true too. Okay, so our function is working. Beautiful. Let's catch up on the chat and then we'll solve it several other ways. Uh, Ed is asking about Cypress. We'll save that. Uh, actually, I mean, there's quite a few things over here. We'll catch up on that. Thanks for the sub, Daniel. Hello, Orlando. Magic VS Code, yeah. And I prefer single quotes. <laughs> Hello, Aditya. <yeah. laughs> um, Lynn is saying Alt plus W. What does that do? Sigma. <laughs> um, maybe it's different on a Mac. I don't know. Uh, Ashish is saying, I wonder if the spread operator can be used here. It absolutely can. So thanks for the suggestion. Um, so basically, right here, where we're iterating over and pushing in, we could use the spread operator instead. So we'll do that. Um, Pastel Rat is saying, if you want to keep it pretty, uh, you could use a, f uh, use a four. You could do four const a of array. I like that too. So th uh, thanks for the suggestion. Suggestion. Um, Let's let's convert it. Instead of using a, a for loop with an iterator, we'll use a for of loop, which we're basically we can say for const current value of array. And that'll be fun too. Thanks for the sub, Chris. Thanks for the follow. I missed it. What was it? <laughs> I didn't read it before I checked it. Um Coor de la, de la nua. Welcome. Thanks for the sub, Mustafa. Uh Lynn is asking what break timer do I use? Um the, there's a command for that. If you do uh, break like that, uh, Streamlabs bot takes a while on, on YouTube, but on Twitch, it's pretty pretty instant. There you go. Um, and just in case the, <laughs> the Twitch Labs bot doesn't respond, uh, not that. Not that. There we go, it responded. Yeah, that's it. Um, it's really cool. So I have it set up to do a uh, micro break, which is just like that 10 seconds you see pop up. That happens every 15 minutes, I think. Yeah, every 15 minutes. And then I have a five minute break that pops up every hour, but you can configure it. You can change what overlay shows up and different things like that. Um, cool. Pastel Rat says, in my opinion, you, could, you, you shouldn't have the test for an array. The part you were creative added on your own. Do you mean I uh, do some other test to determine if it's an array? Is that what you mean? Uh, please clarify, because we could. <laughs> there are other ways to potentially determine if a thing is array or array-like. And in this scenario, we really only care that it has a length property and that we can use the uh, the bracket notation. So we kind of need it to be like, an, I guess, an, an iterator. Um, but yeah. Uh, Lynn is saying line break in VS. Oh, okay. So for, yeah, for me, it's Alt Z. Um, I don't like line breaks though. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we could do that for our comments. Um, uh, the reason I don't like it is because um, especially for new programmers, it can be really weird to see a line wrap and, and you don't get used to um, like where the line ends and like what's on a single line. Um, so I prefer, I prefer not to wrap. Uh, her hello, Priscelsier, just got home. Welcome. I'll only be streaming for probably 10 or 15 minutes more, but welcome. Hello, Frank, welcome. Hello, Sandeep. <laughs> Uh, Orlando is asking, do I have videos with the render function in view? I don't. That would be fun to explore, though, because with view, you can actually use JSX. <laughs> you can actually um, write components that use JSX in a render function rather than having a template, which is amazing. You can do that out of the box with the CLI, which is crazy. Uh, Postalrat is saying, I mean, if the array has elements that aren't an array, it should be maybe be an error. Instead, you added them to the output array. Oh, no, uh, we, we still need to. Um, uh, it's basically what this solution calls for. So the it only goes one level deep, meaning it, it, it only iterates on the top level arrays that it finds. And then anything um, inside of those arrays needs to show up in the resulting array, even if it's not an array. So um, like in this case, this was an array with a string inside of it. The string shows up in the result. And in this case, this was an array with an array inside of it and the array shows up in the result. So it's just one level deep. 
And thanks for the follow, Izzy Gaming. Welcome. Uh, Subum is saying React, Angular, or Vue. I always choose Vue, but it's it's really a personal preference. <laughs> I did a video uh, last year where I built the same app with all three. Um, if you go to coding.garden slash videos, um, you can see a lot of stuff. Uh, search for front end showdown. Yeah, so I build the exact same app with vanilla, React, Angular, and Vue all in the same stream, and we compare and contrast. Um, I should do this soon, though. Let me see when this when this video happened. Um, do, I should do it again soon. So this was May of 20... So this was over a year ago. I want to do it again, but I want to use uh, hooks and effects with React. And I don't know what's new in Angular, but we'll figure that out. And then I want to use the composition API in Vue and build the same app with each. But you can check that out. Thanks for the sub, Jimmy. Uh, Postalrat says, it doesn't say that in the problem, though. It doesn't. You're right. Um, but in the tests, the tests that they give us only go one level deep. So actually, I mean, and, and here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll submit what I have right now. Um, not, not do a full submission, but we could run the sample tests. And those pass the sample tests. Uh, on code words, when you do attempt, it actually runs it through potentially more tests than just the sample tests. And that could, um, that could be a scenario where it goes multiple levels deep. But I, I think because this is a 7Q, it only goes one level deep. Uh, Romolo is asking, this is a great question because I thought about it this morning. How do you determine if you're going to stream standing rather than sitting? It's really just uh, what's set up because right now I don't have it set up where I can switch seamlessly. I basically have to move my camera and move my lights and the setup is this way because it was this way when Berto was here and then I did a stream after that and I left it this way. Um, tonight I'm going to try to stand. Because I do, I, it, it feels more energetic if I can stand up and walk around. And eventually, I'll set it up where I can do either, and I don't have to move things around. But yeah. Yeah, I, it's, it's a good point, Pastel Rat, but I'm, I am, I'm just going to do the minimum required, at least for now. Please do. That's one vote for the front end showdown. <laughs> React, oh yeah, and I'll include Svelte as well, because that's, that's new on the scene since I, I recorded that last video. Thanks for the sub, KM and rule. Okay, so uh, we did it this way. Uh, let's show how we would do it with a for each and then turn it into a reduce and also show the spread operator. So we got multiple things to do. We got about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna copy and paste it. Let's get rid of all my comments. And basically we're gonna take this for loop and use a for each instead. Um, and really, we should use a map here. We should use a map because we're taking an array of one thing and turning it into an array of another thing. So instead of for each, I'm going to use a map. Um, OK, so we'll say we need to return array.map. This takes a function that's going to give us the current value. And then we do the thing. And now we take all of this code that we had in here, put it in the map. But now, instead of pushing into flattened with a map, you just return the value that you want to show up in the resulting array. So we're going to return current value. Great. Uh, and then we don't need to create this current value uh, thing. Cool. And um, oh, this is tricky, though. We can't exactly use a map <laughs> because we need to put multiple values right here in the returned array. Okay, we can't use a map. We gotta do a for each. If someone can think of a way to do this with a map, let me know, but I, I don't think it's, it's possible. So we'll go back to just doing a for each. So we have flatten that starts off as an empty array. Inside of the for each, we'll push the current value into flattened. Use a nested map. Well, um, no, because the values need to show up inside of the, so let's take an example like this one. So, well, and like this one. So in a map, this array that we're passing to the map has length three. There's actually, three, three. There's actually only three things in the array that got passed in. Um, so the result of a map can only be length three. Um, 
for something like this, we would need to reduce because it can potentially create an, an array that's larger. Um, there's not really a way to take a map and return an array that's longer than the array that you're mapping over. Um, okay, and then we just return flattened. So um, this works in exactly the same way. Let's do this two string thing. Wait, it broke in the scenario? <laughs> Let's see what I'm logging instead. Oh, it's not broken. I just need to call two string on this. Sorry, okay, cool. So it's it's still working for all, all scenarios. Um, one thing we could do is we could turn the inner one into a for loop as well. So we could say um, current value dot for each. And this gives us the inner value. And then inside of here, we do that. And this also works. True, 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 true. Cool. Um, so that's, that's a little bit nicer. <laughs> we don't have all the extra cruft of like iterator variables and comparisons and things like that. So that's nice. Um, but now, um, let's turn this into a reduce. And actually, um, so before I do that, let's show how um, we could use the spread operator. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Uh, George is asking what queue. This is actually just a seven queue, but we like to solve it in multiple ways. Um, okay, so we're gonna do this, and we'll use the spread operator. So current value is an array. We're iterating over it and pushing each value in. What we could do, instead is we'll say flattened is equal to an array with all of the, va the current values of flattened. So we're going to spread um, the current values of flattened. And then we're going to spread the current um, current value into that array as well, because that creates uh, an array that has all of the things that were in flattened and all of the things that are in this inner array as well. And um, that still works. Cool. Um, ultimately, I guess we could be like, somewhat more not not exactly functional but instead of pushing into the array <laughs> we could we could do the same thing um, except now we don't actually uh, spread the current value we just push it in and now we're overriding uh, flattened every single time and this works too um, don't exactly like that though let's turn this into a reduce though so um, here's what we do Instead of a for each, we're gonna say reduce. A reduce gets the accumulator. That's the thing that we're building up. In our scenario, we are building up this flattened array. So flattened becomes the accumulator. Um, with reduce, you pass in what is the initial value of the accumulator. We can see here that the initial value is an array. So we're going to do that. And then we'll just return this whole reduce. Cool. Um, and now you can see that it's complaining, but the one thing you have to do in a reduce is the reduce should always return the accumulator, in this case flattened, so that it can be used on the next iteration of flattened. So um, actually what I'll do here is I'll say if it's an array, let's return array uh, spread out, the, the flattened array spread out. Um, otherwise, push it and return it, and we can remove this else. Return flattened. There's my break timer quick stretch mm, and then I do I do have to go because I gotta, gotta go to work uh, but this does it so um, true 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 great and um, yeah Be beautiful <laughs> um, let's let's uh, catch up on the chat and then I gotta go hello dev welcome a motorized standing desk might help yeah but I have a lot of wires a lot of stuff that you don't see where it's um, um, there's a lot going on, so it's, it's a bit hard with a standing desk, so yeah. Uh, Carlos is asking, do I recommend Feathers as a general purpose backend? Yeah, I, I think it, if, you, if you're using Express, I think you should consider using Feathers because you can do all the same things you do with Express if you want to, but at the same time, Feathers provides a lot of extra stuff on top that reduces the amount of code you have to write, that cleans up your code base, so I say yes. 
Uh, Dev says, I discovered your channel last week. You're my favorite instructor so far because I can see the thought press. You're incredible. Thank you so much, Dev. Appreciate it. Uh, can't I use nested maps? Oh yeah, we, we talked about that. No, because the resulting array is always the same length. Yep, and this is a 7Q. Yep, keep it. Thanks for the sub, Parween. <laughs> Um, you could also use the spread like operator like this. Yeah. So take an array, call the concat method uh, with all of the values spread. I like it. I'll, I'll save it as a comment, but I won't implement it because I do have to go. Um, Crowny is asking, do I work as a freelancer? I don't. Um, I work for a consultancy, which is kind of like being a freelancer, but with the security of a monthly paycheck <laughs> and health insurance and stuff like that. Uh, Lynn is asking, what extension am I using? This thing is called Quaka, Quaka JS. Um, it um, will run console logs, and if you get the pro version, it has a lot of other cool features built in too. Share it. That's not it. That's not it. Um, YouTube chat. There you go. Twitch chat. There you go. <laughs> um, we could solve it and use it to solve array, array dot concat array. Very good. Very good. Thank you, uh, Postal Rat. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. <laughs> po oh, Postal Rat. Postal Rat. Uh, Becca says two string returns the same thing on every array. No, so two string will take the array, and um, uh, if you don't pass in any value, it's going to uh, call join, which separates it by commas. So basically, what I've done is I'm I'm making sure that um, when I call two string on one array, it's equal to the same string as the other array. This will actually do something weird because with the nested arrays, it's probably going to have like object object. Um, but for this, it's totally fine because we're only going one level deep. Um, I think someone mentioned, yeah, JB is mentioning, you. I could do, um, actually, I mean, I, I, could, I could do this. Instead of to string, <laughs> I could say uh, json.stringify that and compare that it is equal to json.stringify of the other thing because json.stringify goes, goes deep. <laughs> so it, it, it takes the inner values and turns them into strings as well. And we can see that this works. So um, stringify is only going to go one level deep, and it's going to separate it by commas. Oh, sorry, uh, to string goes one level deep, separates it by commas. Stringify will turn that entire thing into a string, and, and this is more more accurate. So yeah, you're, you're all right. Um, and actually, who was that that said that? Becca, yeah. Two string returns the same thing on every array. You may need uh, JSON to stringify. Yes, we did that. Thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> uh, there's uh, the regex for that uh, remove anchor thing from earlier. Yeah, I mean, um, you wouldn't need to. So basically, if you use stringify, that's all you need because it takes the whole thing and turns it into a string. Yep. Um, hello, uh, Freefow. Uh, so I sent the link. Let me know if uh, I need to send the link again. Also, you can do exclamation part exclamation mark break and the bot will respond with a link quacka hello jonathan i have a question when you did the haystack problem you set the index equal to i but the variable current value was also set to haystack at i why would you just set index equal to current value isn't it the same in this scenario no so in, in this scenario the i is the uh index in the array let's look at my first example so i is just a number it's like zero one two three four current value is the actual value. So um, current value is going to be something like um, needle three, one, two, three, four, undefined, etc. So ultimately I did need a separate variable to hold the index, which is different from the actual value itself, but it's a good question. Hello, Willy Lump Lump. We gotta go, but welcome. <laughs> um, Dev says, how do you think I would go around building a bug tracking app? Start from scratch. <laughs> It, it's basically a, a CRUD app, create, read, update, delete. You're creating, reading, updating, and deleting bugs. So think about it like that. 
plans for building. I want to do, um, I want to finish up Snap Garden, which is the, um, Feathers back end with the React front end using Mapbox. I still need to finish that app before I work on other things. No experience with observables. I gotta go though. Um, uh, and Bitsflip in the chat, if you do exclamation mark keyboard, you'll get a link to my keyboard. Um, it's, it's a cheap, cheap keyboard I got off Amazon, but it's pretty nice. Uh, thank you, Salman, who says congrats for the 20K. I appreciate it. Yeah. Here, and I'll, I'll send the keyboard link, but then I gotta go. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, come on over to Twitch. We're gonna raid a channel. I don't know what channel we're gonna raid, but on Twitch, it's a thing that people do where basically when one person is done streaming, they send all of their viewers over to another channel so that they can watch that stream too. So we're gonna do that. Uh, oh, we both did it. Oh, three times. <laughs> Streamlabs bot should uh, hopefully only respond once. We'll see. Yeah, Instafluff, Instafluff is always live on Wednesday, and I do love rating Instafluff, so that's fun. Um, but for all the YouTubers... Oh, uh, coding garden. So come here first <laughs> to, to Twitch. And then collectively, we will go together to another channel. But So we got to see. It's probably going to be Instafluff because he's a great guy. Um, but let's see who's live. C Sharp Fritz, Instafluff. Um, we can look in the science and technology category. We're probably just going to raid Instafluff, like, to be honest. <laughs> but let's see who else is live. Building an RPG game. Uh, Clarkio is live. I've watched him a few times. Uh, managing libraries and packages in Python. Okay. Here's what is Instafluff working on? Cleaning tips and tricks brought to you by CleanBot. Oh, that he's building a, I guess, a Twitch bot that responds with um, a cleaning tips and tricks. Okay. We're we're gonna raid Instafluff. Um, wait, is it is it it's muted? Today. I hope that means you actually got. The cool. So also, here's also, here's the plan. We can read it. We can read it. <laughs> but here's the plan. I have a we have a raid message. Our raid message is, and get ready to copy this, the coding garden logo like this. With a heart. Green heart. Well, inside of curly braces. And then the seedling inside of curly braces. Cool. That's our raid message. So copy that message, paste it on Twitch. We're going to send this message when we raid Instafluff. Here we go. Um, raid Instafluff. There we go. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. So all of the code that I wrote today, I am going to push up to GitHub. It's going to be at github.com slash coding garden slash code dash Um all of the katas from past episodes are there as well, but everything I wrote today is there. If you have suggestions for katas in the future, you can submit them on the issue tracker. And uh, tune in this evening um, where I will be solving more katas. Potentially, I'm going to solve like a really hard one. Um, like this 2Q evaluating a mathematical expression. Basically, you get a string that's like something you type into a calculator and you have to evaluate it. Um, so I'll do that this evening. That'll be fun. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks everyone for tuning in. You all are awesome. Um, let's go say hi to Instafluff. Be super nice. Be the nicest that you can be. Be the best human you can be. Share lots of fluff love. Here we go. <laughs> cool. And wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. Mm -hmm.